right. Shalom. Shalom. Before we get started, first and foremost, we want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, and Double honors to our apostles and our elders of great millstone who lead, teach, and rule well. Love and honors to our fellow Aki, pushing the word and faith sincerely across the four corners. It's a brother Yadai and a brother Nathaniel Yala from the GMS Atlanta Church. Just wanted to come um, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, drop a lesson. And uh, you know, Lord willing, it's edifying. So you start off in that um, Matthew six. All right, Con. This is Matthew six and nineteen. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, wherefore moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Yeah, man. Because you know, really, we can never lose sight of the fact. And why why we're doing what we do, man? While we while we push, you know, the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, you know, and it's really for us to 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 free ourselves from this world, this wicked kingdom, you know, under under the, the rulership of of Esau Eden, the so-called white man, you know, and we and we through our through the actions that we that we do, being prophesying the downfall of this kingdom. You know, it's going to actually bring upon, it's going to, it's going to show the, the Heavenly Father that we're worthy to be saved, man. You know, so like, like the scripture say, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt because everything that's in, in the physical on earth, it's going to come a point that it's going to, it's going to be, it, it ain't going to be what, what we see it today. You know, really speaking primarily in America, you know, it's not going to be. You're not gonna see houses and cars and shops and stores and you're gonna see none of that shit, man. Because all this is gonna be destroyed. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so with us, with us knowing, understanding that prophecy, you know, the scriptures tell us how to, how to conduct in these times, man. All right. Uh, if if you know, if you want to elaborate on anything, feel free. I was saying, then on, on top of that, you got the so-called white man who steal and, and and take and rob everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, like look at how the currency is being devaluated right now. Mm -hmm. So what is it really worth? Is that something you really want to chase after? You know? Yeah, because like, like the brother said, even even the the treasures the treasures that are on earth, man, it's it's not even our time to to really attain those things, man. You know, not not in the sense that a king a king and ruler is gonna have control over his resources. You know, really, really, our resource, our, our main resource, man, is, is this word, man. This word and, and the spirit contained in the volume of this book. All right. You, you can continue on, bro. And this is verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, mm -hmm. whether moth nor rust do it corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Because because in the kingdom of heaven, man, you know, well, in, in the heavens, in the spirit, in the spiritual realm, everything is... Esau don't run that man. All right, that that's that's run and controlled by the heavenly Father Yahweh. All right, so everything in in the spiritual realm, you know, in in the heavens, you know, is is moving in in order, man. All right, and 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 what and what do we seek for? You know, even even um the Lord's prayer, man. You know, um let 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 things be um on earth as they are in heaven, man. So we we want that that perfect that perfect balance of of righteousness to to dwell on on the earth, you know. So so knowing knowing that the things that we see in the physical today or tomorrow until until it's destroyed, knowing that all this is going to be really is is in essence a form of vanity, you know. Le less less us showing the heavenly Father Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. That we're worthy of salvation by conquering, conquering this place. You know what manner, what manner of man are you supposed to be, man? You supposed, you supposed to be uh, begging and crying out to the heavenly Father, the, the Most High. All right, to 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 put the the righteousness again in this earth, man, like it is in heaven. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, verse twenty one, and it says, "For where your treasure is, there your." There will your heart also be. There will there there will your heart be also, man. And really, me and the brother, we was just you know just talking in the spirit before we cut the camera on. 
is the most the most valuable asset that we have is time man all right so so according to the scripture it says where your treasure is all right which like i said the most the most valuable asset that we have is time so for, for the sake of edification let's, let's replace that with time for where your time is there will your heart be also man all right because we have to actually invest invest in this in 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 this movement man mm -hmm. all right because this isn't this isn't this isn't just a a, a moment in time that is, is that there isn't a, a a major action that's happening like major things are happening you know in 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 prophecy worldwide locally in, in you know um in this country it's in south america you know things are happening man all right so where so where your treasure is and once again for sake for sake of uh, edification the most the most valuable asset that we have is time so where your where your time is man that's going to be where your heart where your really where your spirits where, where the true desire of your spirit is going to be man mm -hmm. and then most of y'all jakes out there what do y'all desire to put y'all time at in babylon mm -hmm. you know you want to put your time in babylon the great and Babylon gonna be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So, so if your time is vested in Babylon, what do you think gonna happen to you? You know. And then, uh, uh, where, where's our time supposed to be vested in? It's supposed to be invested in the eternal. And what's eternal? You how about shouldn't have a shot. You know. Yeah, kind of. Because even like the brother said, most most Jake out here, man, they they're investing their time in things that they're they're not investing their time or their treasure. All right, in, in into the spiritual realm, man, into into showing the heavenly Father that they understand the time that we're in, and they understand what's getting ready to happen, and because of that understanding, they're actually mo you know moving forward to 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 make their their souls and make their souls worthy of salvation. All right, they're actually laying up their treasures in earth, man, which that's that's foolishness. Kind of, because what's happening right now as we speak. You see economies collapsing all across the, the, the earth, man. You know, you got this fractional reserve central, this uh, fractional reserve system, the centralized banking system that has taken hold over all of the all of the countries of the world. And uh, what's happening? The U U.S. dollar is is what the world reserve currency, but it's fallen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So all these nations that had invested into this this fallen wicked currency, their nation has failed. So what do you think will happen to Babylon? You know what I'm saying? What do you think gonna happen to where you putting your time and your effort into? You know, you putting your time and your effort into something that's fleeting. You know, chasing that paper, chasing those those American dreams. But it ain't no dream; it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And look what's happening. But what's gonna happen to you? You know, you need to be putting your effort and your time into how about Shimmy how a shot. And you know, unfortunately, the only men that's gonna be doing that is is his elect, because two thirds of y'all are already slated. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, bro. Exactly, man. But um I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to this Psalms. Uh this is Psalms one twenty seven and one. Except the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Shah build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Alright? And that's and that's that's another reason why it's so so important that we push um those names, man. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, the true and proper name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shah being the true and proper name of the Messiah, man, the one who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. All right, because we 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 through the Spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, we we we're seeking to build the house of the Lord, man, to re erect to re erect the house of David. All right, through those names, through those names, and through the through our labors, man, through our works, which, hey, man, you know, it's not easy, man. You know, it's not easy, but at the same time, it's worth it, man. You know, you, you, we, you got, we have to push through certain things, all right? Because even, even like they say in the world, nothing, nothing worth having or worth obtaining is easy. And, and, and how much more the kingdom of heaven, man, to where, to where 144,000 elect men are going to be joint heirs with your house shy, man. Mm -hmm. Of, of course, of course, it's going to take labor. Of course, it's going to take you pushing and striving you know through certain obstacles to to really you know be be made better man to be made harder you know to be uh 
to be given certain levels of, of heightened understanding, man. And, and just to, to add what the brother was saying, when he was talking about the name, you know, what is what is what is the name Jesus? Jesus is a, a Greek translation. You know what I'm saying? But it's not his name. If 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 somebody called, say for instance, your name was Stephen in English, and and someone called you Stephen in Japanese, you're not gonna know what the hell they're saying. Mm -hmm. And I got a I got a quick a, a quick um precept, and huh. it's more like a, a prologue. And this is the book of Ecclesiasticus, and I'm gonna get straight to the point. And it says in the uh, it's in the fourth paragraph. It says. For the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. So calling him by a different name that's not his doesn't have the power in it. You see what I'm saying? So if you don't have a name, you ain't got nothing. Mm -hmm. Calm. Calm, bro. I'm going to reread this. This is Psalms 127 and 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, waketh but in vain. All right, because once again, it, that 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 goes again to show the 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 importance of the true and proper names of the heavenly Father and the Messiah. All right, and it also goes into the fact that we that we know and understand that, that this place known as America is going to be destroyed, man. All right, because it says, except the Lord keep the city. All right, and 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 we know. That the, the scriptures refer to to America as Babylon the Great, you know. So and, and, except the Lord keep this place, which we also know that the Lord's going to destroy this place, man. So that's 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 one of those uh, food for thought type of type of precepts, man. Because we know this place ain't going to be kept. It's going to come a day that all the, the all the wickedness, you know, that that's been um, allowed allowed and ordained to happen in in this landmass. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna get to a point that the heavenly Father is gonna have to judge this place, man. All right. And, and, and how could he not? I mean, the, the 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 place itself was established on blood. You know, what did what did he say? Uh, uh, woe, abruptly paraphrasing, woe to the man that established his kingdom on blood. Mm -hmm. You know, this place was established on blood, and there's all type of iniquity. You got homosexuality, pedophilia, gambling. Uh, uh, thievery, robbery, adultery. I mean, you name it, you can find it in Babylon. So why would it not be destroyed? Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 this is a, a wicked place. God. And and the thing the thing about it too is, you should want this place to be judged, man. But you know what? You know what it is. Jake and and and, and their spirit, they know that they they that they live and they desire desire to live in wickedness, man. So that's 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 a, the big reason why Jake don't want to come to grips and come to reality of, of the fact that this place has to and must be judged, man. Because Jake know that they're not they're not they're not seeking righteousness, man. All right. Even us, we, we we're seeking to the best of our ability to 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 walk in according to the law, statutes, commandments given to us. Excuse me, but even the scriptures speak about even the righteous righteous uh, man should scarcely be saved, man. But that that also goes hand in hand with the with the fear uh, of knowing the, the the power and the and the um, authority of the heavenly Father. That at any moment, man, you could be out of there, man. Hey, you know, I, I'm gonna give you for instance, man. Like, um, real quick, my uh, my my stepdaughter, she used to babysit. Well, this is a couple about a week ago. She used to babysit um, this this little girl, you know, and her mom dropped her off, you know. Uh, like every other day. About three days ago, we found out that the mom got into a car accident, drunk driver hit her and died. And it was a gruesome death too, because mm. like two weeks prior to that, she had just got into another car accident. So this is a brand new car that she got and she got hit again. Drunk driver blew a light and this was at 930 in the morning. She was on her way to work. When when does it happen where somebody drunk at nine thirty in the morning? That's crazy. That's crazy, right? <laughs> and then the dude blew through a light, hit her, and not only did he hit her, his car caught on fire, and then he <laughs> caught her car on fire and burned her to death. You That's see what crazy, I'm saying? man. So that man, she, man, she was marked, man. Like there's no way. And you then can't on, avoid it. And then on top of that, it's like that can happen anytime, man. If the Most High wants you out of here, you will get out of here, man. 
You Bro, know what I'm saying? Yo, and the thing, the thing about the Heavenly Father, man, he don't even, he don't even need no instruments. He don't need no car. He don't need no plane. Like he can just cut your heart off, man, and you're done. Kind. He can, he can give you a, a, a brain aneurysm. He can just give you a disease, man. Kind. You know what I'm saying? Like the Most High is that bad. He don't, he don't need none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's just a matter of what he allows to happen to you, man. I got a precept for you, though. Right, go ahead. This is, um, you can break it down or speak on it. This is Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. And, and, and what exactly is that? Because you know, if you if you fear the Lord, you, you know what he might do to you. You see what I'm saying? You know the power of Yahweh Shem Shai and what he can do to you. So what's the wisdom? Is the knowledge and understanding of his book, the law, statutes, and commandments that he's given us, man. Mm -hmm. So you know that, it, hey, if I don't do this, I know what the Most High can do to me, man. I right. know where he can put me, what, what, how powerful he is. So it's in my best interest to do this. You know what I'm saying? And if I do this, if, I, if I'm into the law, statutes, and commandments, what am I? I'm going to be set apart. I'm going to be holy, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Kind of really, and really, you should have a certain level of self-examination, man, and you should be able to look back. Because, man... The Heavenly Father didn't jack all of us up at points in our life, man. It's been times that we've all been fucked up, man. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, really, in, even in your self-examination, you should you should always have points and memories and, and, and reference points in your mind where you was like, man, shit, man, the most high, he was fucking me up at that point, man. And think about it, it, it could always be worse, man. It could always be way worse, man. But that, go into the, that, that goes into the mercies of the Heavenly Father, man. You know, I'm going to just readdress that and expound on just a little bit. It's, um, once again, going in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. All right? Because you have, you, you have different levels of knowledge, of, of knowledge, and really, specifically, primarily, you have different levels of understanding. So, knowledge, knowledge being really... Um, the the ability to conceptualize and to really have a certain level of understanding of certain things all right and it says the and the knowledge of the holy is understanding but really the understanding is a, a different level of being able to take that knowledge and it's like man yeah i understand it's enough that i'm gonna actually convert it also into wisdom and walk in those ways in those principles built upon that knowledge but for you to for you to really be be um, moving in the understanding spirit that that makes you holy man like the brother said that's what separates you from a, a, a unwise or unknowledgeable person man and it's all built and predicated on the fear of the heavenly Father man because like I like like we're going into man it ain't nothing for the Most High to, to touch you man nothing He created you. I got a precept real quick to add to what you was just expounding upon. Come on, bro. Uh, this is um, Proverbs 111 and 10. And it says, for the fear. Oh, you said uh, pro uh, pro Proverbs. Sorry, Psalms. Psalms, Psalms, Psalms 111 and 10. It says, for the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do, that, that do his commandments, his praise endures forever. Come on, break it down, bro. So, you know. Basically, the fear of the Lord, you know what I'm saying, is the beginning of wisdom. That means that you're going to start seeking the knowledge and understanding of his commandments. And you're going to do them because you fear him. You know, uh, there's a scripture roughly paraphrasing. I can't remember exactly. But they found a book of the law. And they realized, the king found a book of the law when he realized he wasn't doing the commandments of the Lord. He, he had all his people start doing the commandments of the Lord because his kingdom was in shambles. Because uh, what what what, what uh, who who was that? I can't remember the exact. Um, but anyway, moving forward, he had everybody in his, in his kingdom to do the commandments, the law, statutes, and commandments that was in his book. Because he had fear, he instantly had fear. He was just like, "Hey, what? We, we supposed to be doing this? You know what I'm saying? I can't remember exactly. Yeah, I can't recall. Either. Yeah, I can't recall. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, roughly paraphrasing, but um, uh. You know, um, when he dug into the book of the law, he saw that, hey, his, he, they wouldn't obey the law. 
So that fear came upon him and the king was just like, hey, we got to start doing, we got to do this. We got to do this law, you know, and um, that was the beginning of wisdom because, you know, when he when he knew that the most high can have him out of here at any given time for not obeying these laws, statutes and commandments, you know what I'm saying? He started to learn about what the, the law, what the Lord required of him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he started to obey. Mm -hmm. And um, like like I said, you know, his praises endure forever because this wisdom gives you eternal life. This knowledge, this 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 law, statutes, and commandments, it gives you eternal life, man. You know what I'm saying? It brings you back to that tree, mm -hmm. you know. And um, and uh, you know, hey, come, come, man. I can't really elaborate on it even more than that, but hey, you know, like I said, facts, man. You know, this that's why we in the situation that we in right now. That's why Jake in the situation that we in right now, because what happened? The, the law, the Lord would give us law, statutes, and commandments. We agreed to those, and He told us back in Deuteronomy twenty-eight, if we do not, do not hearken. And you know what? I just get it real quick. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because this this goes back. This this hits the point on what we were saying. So, it's Deuteronomy 28, I think it's 28 and 15. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, and it says, but it shall come to pass, if thou shalt not hearken unto my voice of the Lord of Yahweh thy power to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee mm -hmm. now isn't that going into that wisdom you know what I'm saying like knowing that hey if I don't do what he's telling me to do this is what's going to happen but contrary to this in, in the Deuteronomy 28 starting at verse 1 it says, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently on to the voice of Yahweh thy power to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that Yahweh thy power will set thee, Yahweh thy power will set thee on high above all nations. You see? So it's like doing what he tells you to do puts you in a high position and you ain't got to worry about nothing and not doing what he tells you to do put you on the bottom man put you in a terrible position mm -hmm. so that's where that wisdom come in man i'm calm. you got it out calm bro yeah it was uh wrap it up on this you know uh matthew 11 and 28 is yahweh shot yahweh shot speaking it says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest you know because just like the brother brought out, man, in Deuteronomy uh, 28 and 15, man, we under, we, our people, our people, once again, being uh, the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Americans, and the confusion of face out there, you know, people who look like other, other nations, but really, their seed line goes back to, um, to, to Israel, you know, so-called, you know, so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, um, we we've been living under curses, man, for for a long time, man. You know, really, we've been we've been reaping the the the. I don't want to say the benefits because they ain't a benefit. But we, we've been we've been pretty much reaping what we sow, you know, uh, by not hearkening and not not listening to the spirit, not listening to the heavenly Father, and not walking in his in his commandments. We've been pretty much reaping what we sow, man. Our people as a whole have been sowing wickedness. So we've been reaping the curses, man. All right. And that shit, that shit, it adds up on you, man. It, add, it adds up on us individually. It adds up on us as a body. You know, our, the body being the, the men who are pushing, you know, the, the, the spirit of, of truth and prophecy, you know. Then it also adds up on our people, man. All right. Um, once again, this is Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And really, the, the real the real laborers out here, man, are, 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 are the men pushing this, this, this word, man. All right. And the scripture says, come unto him, come unto Yahweh Shai, and he's going to give us rest. All right. And, we, and there should be a level of understanding pursuing the Micah 2 and 10 that this is not 
we had we we weren't we weren't put in this place to to rest, man. We were put in this place to labor, man. All right, to to actually show our people their transgressions. Con and and um, just to go back to that king that I was talking about, that was King Josiah. Con. You know what I'm saying? It's Second Kings 22, starting at verse eight, and it talks about how the high priest went on to Steph and the scribe and found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. So when you go into this and when you go into the scripture, it talks about how King Josiah, when he read the book of the law, he was like, hey, we supposed to be doing this. You know what I'm saying? And then you go, um, if you go down to uh, verse 16, it says, thus say of uh, power, behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all of my words of this book, which the king of Judah had read. So King Josiah knew that not obeying the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, once that book was found, that it was going to bring destruction upon them. So I just wanted to, you know, find that for nah, the good, edification purpose. Nah, nah you good. I, you good. Scripture speaks about proving all things, you know. And um, and you made a beautiful point too, because once the, he once he attained the, the law, there there is no more room to to to. Put forth for argument of, of ignorance, man. Yeah. No, even because even with us, us being in the dark, not knowing that we are these people and that we should truly be living under the, the mandates of, of of this word, man. You know, whether being in in a so-called Christian church or you know other other sects that pretty much go off because you're not you're not fulfilling the book as as it is written. All right. Once you realize once once the spirit reveals to you that, that you're an Israelite, man, you, you can't, you can't put forth the argument of ignorance no more, man. And that's why a lot of Jake be trying to plug their ears and try to act like they don't, they don't know what's going on because they want to still put forth the argument. Uh, I, I didn't know I was supposed to, you know, live like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, the Bible say that, but I, I, I was always taught that, that, you know, we, the law is dead, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cause Jake, man, Jake be looking for that way, that, that easy way out, man. But the scriptures speak about we're supposed to be laborers, man. We're supposed to be working, man. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to be um, praying, praying for judgment, man. Praying for for righteous judgment at the same time, working towards our own personal, our own salvation personally, and then you know, for for the the, the elect, man. Those those souls who were created and ordained to attain salvation, man. All right, you got some? Oh no, I'm, I was just going to elaborate. I was looking for the actual precept, but you know, um, is the, the Messiah, how Shahamashiach said it right out of his own mouth. He said, "Until heaven and earth pass away, not one tittle, not one jot shall be removed from the law until all be fulfilled." Mm -hmm. So, if you read that, that's plain English. That's plain. You you can't get around that. Mm -hmm. That means the law has not been taken away, you know what I'm saying, and how you're supposed to be the law, and it's through faith, man, you know what I'm saying, you're not saved through works, but through faith, so you have faith that if you practice the law to your best of your ability, maybe the most high might come and save you, man. Because even scripture speaking about uh, faith, faith without works is, is dead. Mm -hmm. So that, that's all I have, man. Come on, bro. Uh, this is uh, Matthew 11 and 29. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. So yoke, like you know, when you um, when you put a yoke on on oxen or a, 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 a an animal, it's that it's that harness, man. So you able to to guide and, and steer it, you know, and and actually able to to harness to to harness the, the the power, you know, of, of that animal, you know, so you can actually guide it properly, man. So Yahweh Shah said, take his joke upon upon us and learn of him. Alright, we're supposed to be learn taking taking upon the burden of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, man, the one who the world when he calls Jesus Christ. And learning of him, man, learning about the, the, the pure and righteous spirit that the Heavenly Father Yahweh put into that vessel, you know, that when he walked the earth as a man, you know, the the the, the spirit that he put in, in, into the man, the, the 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 carnal flesh was perfect, man. All right, for I am meek and lowly in heart. So once again, man, it's not it, there is no room for pride in this, man. All right, because if if you if you walking and moving in a proud spirit, 
then you you not you you moving against you moving against the spirit that Yahweh Shah encapsulated, man, and that and 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 the spirit of energy that he pushed for it, man. Because yeah. even even Yahweh Shah said out of his own out of his own mouth that he's meek and lowly in heart, man. All right, and and this and this this is the the Messiah, man. This is the 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 one spirit put into the flesh that through his works. He's able to redeem a whole uh, a whole nation of people, man. All right, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. All right, and then going and going back into the uh, the precept that we was that we brought out earlier in Matthew, it, it ain't it ain't about storing up treasures on earth, man. It's about storing up treasures treasures in in heaven, man. All right, and at the end of the day, we hoping to attain that salvation. Not for this fleshly body, but for our souls, man. All right. Um, verse thirty: For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right, and this and this is this is speaking relatively, man. All right, because really, all the things that we go through, we already we already have access to have the strength and power and 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 the ability to to conquer these obstacles, man. That's that's what you have a shop was put on the cross for all right and if the script if the script is speaking about um the heavenly father knowing us before we were put in the womb then and if the script, if the script is speaking about the heavenly father knowing us before we were put in the room before we were put in the womb and the scriptures also state that there is a a, a like body out here man you got to put two and two together and, and know and realize that the heavenly father is going to equip those men, women, and children, but we're going to speak primarily to the men right now. The Heavenly Father has equipped His men, His prophets, those who are who are uh, who were predestined to to lead His nation, His nation, or His people, His chosen people, through the fire, through, through hell, through this wicked kingdom. All right, He already put into those men, into those vessels, the tools and the capability. All right, to overcome all this shit, man, it's already in us. Mm -hmm. But it's a matter of of having the faith and 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 trusting in the Lord, man. Trusting in the the heavenly Father Yahweh. All right, trusting in the sacrifice given to us. All right, for our people through uh, Hamashiach, and and also trusting the Spirit, man. Trusting the Spirit is gonna uh, reveal certain things to you and build you up in the way that the heavenly Father wants you to be built up, man. All right, and th and that's where it, go it goes into uh, his yoke being easy. All right, because are th are there times in, in the scripture speaking about? Yeah, there are. You know, uh, we're going to be um, tried in the fire of, of in the fire of adversity. All right, but at the same time, when you put into a a, a, a a sticky situation, so to speak, you should already know and understand how to maneuver how to maneuver and 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 get through that thing, man. And if not, then you have you have a brotherhood. You have a brotherhood that you can tap into, all right, who, with men who have either gone through similar similar situations or have seen other men stumble, you know, fall. You know who can who can give you uh, sound counsel for you to continue to move forward, man. All right, and at the end of the day, never never lose sight of the fact. Of what we're fighting for, man. We're fighting for ourselves to be saved. We're fighting for those close to us to be saved. All right. And we're fighting for salvation and ultimately being being a ruler, a joint ruler with Yahweh Shah Mashiach in the kingdom of heaven, man. So anything that we deal with in, on this side, anything we deal with, if, if, as long as as long as we endure and we continue to push forward, man, it's gonna all be worth it, man. Every, everything that we deal with. In the flesh, once the kingdom of heaven is established on earth, and Lord willing, we're the men who are going to have a joint rulership with Yahweh Shah. It's going to, we're, going to, we're going to all look back at it and be like, man, it was fucking worth it, man. Not just that. We're going to look back at it and be like, it was it was nothing. Right. You know, the scripture speaks something about how, you know, uh, roughly paraphrasing, we're going to look back at it and be like, man, that was nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just what you're going to get on the other side completely outweighs what we're getting on this side man you know like it says it says um the, the eye have not seen neither uh uh 
the eye have not seen, um, the ear have not heard, neither has it came into the hearts and the minds of men. Mm -hmm. um, what the Lord has in store for them that love him, roughly paraphrasing, which God. means that we can't even imagine. We can't even, in our in our mind, we can't even conceive what it's going to be like. We can think about it. You're like, hey, you know, he, you know, maybe we're going to have glorified bodies, yada, 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 yada. But the, the scripture, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. You see what I'm saying? So even though we're thinking like, oh, this is going to be so grand, we really can't even imagine it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like what he got in store for us on the other side. Shit, just honestly, just to be able to actually live in righteousness, man. Just that in itself is going to be a blessing, man. Right, man. So you're going to be able to just eat freely knowing that you can eat, man. You got to worry about checking labels and all that bullshit, man. Oh, man, dude. Going to a tree and there's a fruit on the tree and you're just picking the, the straight off the tree and biting into it and not having to worry about, you know, anything. Having your kids just being able to just roam. Being able to have kids, man. I can't even fucking have kids on this side, man. <laughs> your kids ain't even yours, man. Right. As soon as your, kid, your child is born, they sign over to the state. And that's why they can come take your children away when they want to. Right. Like, man, it's, it's going to be worth it, I can we just got to continue to push, man, and push, man. You know, we got to push, man. All right. But I don't have anything else. If you don't have nothing, not. Oh, yeah. No, I'm good. Kind, kind. So we're going to, once again, give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, and Kakwadash. Double honors to our apostles, our elders, a great millstone, lead teacher, rule well. Honors and love to our fellow Aki Christian word and faith sincerity across the four corners. Lord willing you edify. Let's keep pushing Aki until the end, man. All right. So once again, Lord willing you edify until next time. Shalom. Shalom.